is an introduction to exercise 8b on perfect squares and difference of perfect squares on page 506 of our textbook. For our do not question, we had 3x minus 5 multiplied by 4x plus 3. Again, applying FOIL. First is the F. So that's 3x multiplied by 4x. What does that give me? Thank you very much. Equals a 12x squared. That's my first term. Outer, I multiplied 3x by the positive 3. gives me 9x. Inner, I multiply the inside 2. So that's negative 5 multiplied by 4x. What does that give me? Good. Negative 20x. Finally, I have minus 15 because that's the negative 5 multiplied by the 3. I simplify that. I get 12x minus 11x. Sorry, 12x squared minus 11x minus 15. Now, in this circumstance... Uh, there isn't really a number that we can easily factorize out, right? There's no, like, a all-even numbers, anything like that. But if you are presented with something where they're all-even numbers and you can simplify by factorizing, you should do that. But in this circumstance, no need to do so. Okay? We'll go through it later on anyway. So today we're focusing on perfect squares and difference of perfect squares. We have briefly looked at this, uh, but the idea of perfect squares goes back to even year 7, right? So we're focusing on the idea of numbers that we can get by squaring a number, a nice number, theoretically. So in this case, for example, 3 squared gives us 9, so therefore 9 is a perfect square. Pretty straightforward. 2y squared, now y is not a number that we know of that is a nice number. It could even be, for example, 0 0.843, which is not a nice number. But 2y squared is a square number. The name implies that, right? As you remember from our diagram last lesson, it's a square that's 2y by 2y. We're looking for a number that represents a square. x minus 1, same thing. It's not a singular term in terms of x, and then I've got the negative 1, but it's squared, so therefore it's a square number. 3 minus 2y, all squared, same thing. They're all examples of perfect squares. The formula is as follows, and for me, the formula is not important. Right? The formula is not important because you could just use the same expansion approach from last, with the last lesson to exercise 8a. Right? You can just use the same approach. But the formula is as follows, and the proof is there, but you don't need to copy it down. What you need is this component here. a plus b, all squared, equals to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. That is a formula you may use if you can't be bothered using FOIL or crab claw. I don't think crab claw is an actual mathematical term, is it? Yeah. Mm. But you can use this if you'd like. You don't have to. Okay? If you were to go from this step, the first step, to the second step, without showing any working out and just writing that, I would assume you use the formula. That's perfectly fine. The other formula to take note of is this. A minus B, all squared, gives us this. And again, the same thing applies. If you have... If you have a different approach, so just you want to use FOIL, that will always work. Just use that. This is just if you want to. The key idea is for this one later on, we would want to reverse and go backwards and factorize instead of expand. And then we can use this formula. But again, we'll talk about that later. The key point for this lesson is this component here. Difference of perfect squares. The difference of perfect squares. It's in the name. This one right here is where the formula comes from. It's a difference, which is subtraction, between two perfect squares. Now, in this case, it's a and b, right? a squared, b squared, but it could be anything. It could be 2x all squared. It could be 3 squared, whatever it is. But the formula, again, is as follows. If we have, if we have this, a plus b multiplied by a minus b, we end up with a squared minus b squared. You'll note that the quote-unquote middle term can gets cancelled out. If you were to do this expansion yourself, you can see that this negative AB and this positive AB cancel out, which is why you end up with only two terms in your answer. A similar concept is over here. Right? You can see it's the same formula, we're just switching it around the other way. Okay, they're both valid. They're both valid. Any questions about that? Sweet. You don't need a wave at them. It's okay. Expand and simplify the following. X plus 4, 
x minus 4. Again, if you were to just identify based on formula, which one would it be? Would it be a difference of perfect square? Would it be a perfect square from expanding perfect squares above? Which formula would it be if I've got one that's positive, one that's negative? This one? It is. I'm going to use the normal FOIL approach. Just That's just what I prefer, right? So I'm going to go ahead and say x times by the x gives me x squared. That's the first. Outer, negative 4 multiplied by, sorry, x multiplied by the negative 4, which is a negative 4x. Inner, which is 4x. And last, which is negative 16, which simplifies to, and again, these two terms cancel out. And we end up with x squared minus 16. And you'll note it's the same approach as before. If you wanted to, you could say that it's the same as x squared minus 4 squared. Because, and you'll see here, it's the same formula. But I'm going to keep it as 16. I prefer that. Next question. Expand and simplify. So if I've got the square, for me, I think it's a little bit harder to read that. So I just rewrite it as... Rewrite it as 3x plus 4, 3x plus 4. And that multiplies again. The first term is 3x multiplied by the first term and the second one, which is 3x times 3x. What's 3x all squared? 9x squared. 9x squared, very good. 9x squared. So it's a 3 times by the 3, the x times by the x. That's first. Outer, which is going to be 3x times by the 4, which is going to be 12x. The inner, which is again 4 times by the 3x, which is 12x. And the last, which is 16. Which simplifies down to 9x squared plus 24x plus 16. Is there any other further way to factorize that? Any number we can take out? No? I'm pretty happy with that as well. Any questions? Awesome.